Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative, and today we're talking about the Sony ZV-1. My initial thoughts on this camera, and should you consider it for vlogging or just for everyday use? So I thought about buying a small, lightweight vlogging camera, if I ever decide to vlog in the future, something that's lightweight and compact, something I could throw in my pocket when I'm going on my trips and on my travels, just so I don't have to bring my Canon R6 or my Canon EOS R. So I came across the Sony ZV-1. Now, I know a lot of people know this camera. A lot of vloggers use it. Um, it's pretty popular when it comes to vlogging and just YouTube content. And I know that this camera is made for consumers. It is for, you know, content creators, young people, stuff like that. Um, and it's not really meant for professional use. But being the creator that I am, I decided to take this camera on a fashion photography shoot and see if I could do video and if I could do photography with it, comparing it with my Canon R6 um, in a photography shoot scenario. Now, some of the specs I really like about this camera is it's light, it's compact, it has a flip out screen for vlogging. It's got a lot of different codecs for a small camera. It shoots 4K, 30, it shoots S-Log, three and S-Log2, it's got all these different picture profiles on this camera, which is really impressive for a camera that's about $600. It has an awesome lens on it, which is attached, so you can't remove it, you know, like it is a point and shoot, but it is a Zeiss equivalent of a 24 to 70, which is the range I usually shoot with. And for the most part, I just think this camera has a lot of features baked into it at that price range and in this small little camera body that doesn't really make sense. So when it comes to photography, this camera has a 20 megapixel sensor, which if you're gonna compare that to the camera that's always on you, like a iPhone or you know some type of smartphone, this is a huge step up in quality in my opinion when you have a camera that has manual functions and a sensor like this. So I had two models that I was shooting on this day. And of course I had my Canon R6 to shoot the majority of the work. Um, I would pull out this ZV-1 and take a few photos. The models loved it. They thought it was really cute. And at the same time, they were pretty, pretty impressed by the images that I was taking with this little point and shoot camera. The question is when it comes to photography, can you use a camera like this on a, you know, professional shoot? No. I don't know what the f that was. You can't. I wouldn't do it unless you're doing it for a YouTube video like this. But if you're a content creator and you shoot stuff on your own and you shoot vlogs and you like to shoot social media photos and you want to shoot stuff for your portfolio, you could totally shoot photography with this camera. 20 megapixels is more megapixels than I had when I first started photography back in the day. And you're gonna get a great image when it comes to this Sony camera. If I blow up this picture and compare it to another high-end Sony image or a high-end Canon image, you're probably gonna see a major difference when it comes to quality, but if you're just looking at the image without going side by side, it's a really nice image when it comes to photography. One of the things I like about this little camera is the autofocus on this camera is amazing. It's a vlog and social media camera, so doing um, vlog tests, the autofocus is amazing. Shooting photography, the autofocus is not the best when it comes to the Sony lineup, but it works for the most part, and you're gonna be surprised by the actual performance of it. Now, this camera's main focus is vlogging. It's got awesome features, like it can smooth out your skin when you're shooting. It has a defocus, you know, defocus button where you can actually make things more blurry in the background, um, you know, when you're shooting. So it like gets, it takes care of like a blurry background just with a button. Um, and it also has really cool features. Like it has a digital ND filter on the camera, which I feel like all Sony cameras at this point should figure out a way to make a digital ND because you have the technology. Even if it's not the best ND, you could literally do this and it would be really sick. The camera has a steady shot type of stabilization. It's not the best. If you're walking and vlogging with this camera, you're gonna notice it's a little wobbly, but if you're holding the camera pretty still or walking pretty slow, you'll get a stabilized image and it's not too jarring. So the stabilization is not the best, but it's pretty good for a $600 camera.
Now, when I was shooting with this camera, one thing that you're gonna notice if you are a professional and you're shooting photography or video is there's not really dynamic range in this camera. So the, the dynamic range you're gonna get is not the best. Shoot S-Log two or three, you can if, if you're willing to deal with it, but it's gonna probably break apart when you edit, um, you know, edit the colors and post. But the dynamic range on this camera is not the best when it comes to photography or video. So just keep that in mind. One of the things I had to do a lot of times when I was shooting photos is I really had to protect the highlights because if I didn't, they were just gonna get blown out quickly. And I knew I really couldn't recover them like I would really wanted to. Um, it just doesn't have the dynamic range of a professional camera. I think for a beginner, you're probably not even gonna notice that. So it's just something coming from a professional standpoint that you use a camera like this and as fun as it is, you realize its limitations when it comes to the image quality. Cool thing about this camera is the audio quality on this camera is pretty good. Um, I want a camera that I don't have to have a huge microphone attached to or a camera where, yes, I can attach a microphone to this camera like a little shotgun or a road or something like that. But the little in-body microphone on this camera, it comes with this little windshield. It's pretty good. I'm trying to see how it looks when you just walk with the camera and just kind of walk and talk. The stabilization for that. Let's keep on testing it. And I'm not gonna lie, I could see myself using this for a travel you know, film or just vlogging my everyday life and probably not even attaching an actual microphone to it. The quality of this video is surprising. So you shoot with a small little Sony ZV-1 and you're looking at the image and you think it's gonna have compromises and it's pretty good. I could see this being on YouTube. I could see this being in a lot of different things. And you probably wouldn't even tell that it's a consumer level camera. So as far as video quality, I was very impressed. It kind of reminds me of like my A6300, that my little Sony A6300, like those type of cameras, that type of image quality. Not the best, not the top of the line, but pretty good. And I'm surprised Sony could cram that type of quality in this little body. Now, should you buy the ZV-1? Now, if you want to vlog, I'm obviously a Canon shooter. I love Canon. I used to be a Sony shooter, but I feel that Canon doesn't really have a good equivalent to this type of camera without different types of uh, issues. Also, the Canon M50 is not as compact. You still have to put lenses on it. It's not gonna be able to fit in your pocket. The ZV-1 can go in your back pocket. It's smaller than your iPhone and it really doesn't have that many compromises when it comes to a vlog camera. So if I were you and you're looking for a starter camera, you could get a ZV-1 and a microphone and a little type of small tripod and you would be good to go for the most part. And you could create content for YouTube with no problem and probably wouldn't need to upgrade for a while. So that's all I have to say about the Sony ZV-1. I just had a fun time messing with this camera. Um, before you read in the comments like, this is a stupid comparison. I know this is a stupid comparison. I'm just doing it because it's fun. If you have any questions about photography or videography, hit me in the comments below and I will see you next time. See you later.